innocent things from triggering an asthma attack. Please make the monsters go away. Learn how to stop their asthma attacks at noattacks.org. Coming up on Carolina News, 10 people in Colorado are dead after a gunman opened fire in a grocery store. This is real horror and terror for all of us. The latest on the suspect and the victims. The search is still on for a driver that struck a person in five points. Didn't treat the person they struck as a fellow human being. The vehicle you should keep an eye out for. And the story behind Sir Bigspur. <laughs> Where the chicken crows when he's not in Willie B. All that and more on Carolina News. From the University of South Carolina, your news, your sports, your weather. Carolina News begins now. Hello and welcome to Carolina News. I'm Ethan Still. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Carter. Ten people are dead after a shooting at a Boulder, Colorado grocery store. That's right, and police named a suspect in the shooting earlier today. One police officer died in the shooting, and officials are sharing more about the other nine people that were killed. Madeline Stewart is live in the newsroom with more on the suspect and the victims. Madeline. Thanks, Megan. An investigation is still underway, but Boulder police have identified the suspect as 21-year-old Ahmad Alyssa. Officials say that the gun he used was an AR-15 style pistol. Police also identified the 10 victims in the shooting. One of them, Officer Eric Talley, lost his life while responding to the attack. The other nine victims range in age from 20 to 65. Colorado Governor Jared Polis says that the impact of the shooting goes much further than Boulder. Not only did we lose 10 lives, but this is real horror and terror for all of us. The simple act of, of shopping in a grocery store. Police have not yet identified a motive for the shooting, but they say they have spoken to Alyssa. He was in the hospital earlier today, but was sent to jail this afternoon and is facing 10 counts of first degree murder. President Biden has ordered all flags to be flown at half staff, and he is also pushing lawmakers to ban assault rifles and high capacity magazines. Live in the newsroom, Madeline Stewart, Carolina News. Thanks, Madeline. As Colorado continues to grapple with gun violence, here in South Carolina, a group of Republican state senators are trying to strengthen gun rights within the state. The unorganized militia law says that able-bodied South Carolina residents over the age of 17 are part of the state's militia. Senator Tom Corbin of Greenville is filing a bill that clarifies what weapons these unorganized militia can carry. These measures are being added to ensure that the federal government cannot disarm South Carolina citizens. Sumter police are looking for two men whose gun deal led to a shooting. Octavius Jonathan Brock and Dwayne Calmel McKenzie are both being charged with two counts of attempted murder, two counts of armed robbery, and two counts of kidnapping. Brock's brother has been arrested and charged with all accounts. Officers say the deal turned a robbery and then a shooting. If you have any information, call the Sumter Police Department. Police are searching for the driver of a hit and run case that happened in Five Points over the weekend. The victim was crossing the road and tripped over a raised median. The crash happened just before 2 a.m. Saturday on Hardin Street, right around the time that bars were starting to close. Didn't treat the person they struck as a fellow human being. Didn't call EMS, anybody. It didn't call anybody to render aid, let know what happened. Um, struck an individual and left him on the side of the road. The police are looking for a black Dodge Charger with tinted windows, black wheels, and blue headlights. Deputies say the vehicle most likely has front end damage. Police are asking for your help in identifying three suspects wanted for breaking into cars in Greek Village. Two white males were seen taking items from more than 20 cars on video surveillance. A white female then used a stolen credit card from one of the cards at a nearby da gas station. Excuse me. There is a cash reward of up to $1,000 for any information that leads to an arrest. You can call South Carolina Crime Stoppers if you have any information about the suspects. It's been, a, it's been a pretty cloudy day today in Columbia. Sydney Edwards is in the Kennedy Greenhouse with our first forecast. Sydney, will we see some sun anytime soon? Unfortunately not. We have showers headed later on in the week. I'll have that more for you later in the show. Stay tuned. Back to you all in the studio. 
Thanks, Sydney. As over 1 million South Carolinians have been vaccinated, COVID numbers remain low across the state. DHEC announced today there are 494 cases of the coronavirus. Two new deaths were also reported. The positivity rate is 4.8%. DHEC says almost 600,000 people have been fully vaccinated in South Carolina. And as those COVID numbers remain steady, Governor McMaster visited a downtown vaccination site today to get a, give us an update on the rollout. The hope is that more vaccinations will lead to more tourism. Tori Sloan is live at the convention center with more on the governor's visit. Tori. Employees in the restaurant and hospitality industries have been getting their COVID vaccines here today. Around 400 doses of the Pfizer vaccine have been given out just at this site today. And with help from volunteers, the hospitality industry is getting some relief. This really marks a day that we see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're just really excited about being here today. Governor Henry McMaster visited and toured the vaccination site today and spoke with Dr. Loveless from the Loveless Family Practice about the vaccination process. The Pfizer vaccine is being administered at the site today, and Governor McMaster is hopeful for the changes that come with the increase in vaccinations. We didn't close down, we just slowed down, and as a result, we are going to be able to launch back as we're doing now, following the plan of Accelerate SC, and, and get our people all back to work and, and safe. As the number of vaccinations go up, the director of the South Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism hopes for tourism in the state to return to normal. We'd love to welcome visitors now and South Carolina is open. We're ready for them to come back. We think it's, uh, you know, you're seeing it more and more and people traveling today, and more and more people out. There's more traffic, there's more retail, there's more people in hotels, more people in restaurants and people are getting accustomed to it as, again, as I mentioned, cases go down, vaccinations go up and the weather gets warmer. We'd love to have you in South Carolina. Hospitality workers also have another opportunity to come here on Friday. They will be giving out an additional four to 500 more vaccines, and the second dose will be given out the week of April 16th. Live from the Columbia Metropolitan Center, Tori Sloan, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Tori. There are new questions surrounding the vaccine made by AstraZeneca. The company claims that it's 79% effective at preventing systemat or, yeah, symptomatic excuse me, cases of COVID-19. But this morning, the National Institutes of Health issued a statement saying that the DSMB expressed concern that AstraZeneca may have included outdated information from that trial, which may have provided an incomplete view of the efficacy data. AstraZeneca has announced they plan on releasing new analysis in the next 48 hours. The new vaccine is currently in trial at the Medical University of South Carolina. As vaccine rollouts are increasing across the country, air travel is taking off. For the past two weeks, the TSA has screened over a million passengers per day at airports. On Sunday, a little over 1.5 million people boarded a plane, breaking a pandemic record. Numbers haven't been this high since March of 2020 when the pandemic first started. These spikes come as many schools are on spring break. CDC directors warn that these actions could spark another surge in cases and still recommend that Americans do not travel. Last week, Columbia City Council narrowly approved a controversial large gathering. That event, the Gervais Street Bridge Dinner, is now set for May 2nd. Our Forrest Tucker has more on how the city plans to move forward with large gatherings this spring. Once every year, the Gervais Street Bridge becomes Columbia's largest dining room. And after City Council's 4-3 approval, the Gervais Street Bridge Dinner will be served in May. But some members, including Councilman-at-Large Howard Duvall, think that now is not the time to allow large events. Uh, I think that there are two events on our resolutions here that are too large and too soon for us to allow them to occur. Uh, the Gervais Street Bridge Dinner is one of them. While Duvall voted no, District 4 Councilman Daniel Rickenman approved of the event. And then I think the um, production crew that's putting it on and the caterer have, have really thought about how to spread it out and be safely. Before the pandemic, the event looked like this. But now, organizers will require masks, have temperature checks at the door, and socially distanced tables. The dinner's communications representative, Neil Boone, is envisioning success. I hope that we're going forward. Everybody looks at our event and sees the, the precautions, the optimism that we had about going into the, this event and successfully pulling it off. The dinner's capacity has also changed. It used to be 1,400. 
but now only 1,000 tickets will be sold. During their last meeting, City Council approved five other events. Rickenman sees them as a starting point to getting back to normal. It's a good cross-section of different events to allow us to gauge and improve on as we continue to, to move forward. Rickenman said that he does not know how many events City Council will have to debate on moving forward. The dinner will be Columbia's first large gathering since the pandemic began. For Carolina News, I'm Forrest Tucker. Tickets for the dinner will be on sale in the coming weeks. Coming up on Carolina News, as artists struggle with the pandemic, there's a little help. And it comes with a lot of fun. We'll tell you about the old machine with a new purpose when we come back. A repurposed cigarette machine. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize 